How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Good. You all got to see. How many episodes have you got to see so far? Three. 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 Okay. So, <laughs> why should fans watch the show? Your own work? Um, I think. Um, we've been having a lot of fun on Robot Chicken for many seasons, taking fantastic characters and finding the, you know, the human, um, what's funny about the reality of, of those characters. If those characters existed for real, what would be funny about their everyday lives? That's sort of some one of our uh, tropes on Robot Chicken that we go back to over and over. We find that endlessly funny. And so getting to do recurring characters, especially big, um, colorful comic book characters, um, and, and applying the same sort of curiosity about their everyday lives, to us it's endlessly entertaining. And we kind of think, if we find it entertaining, maybe the viewers will find it entertaining. Yeah. And every episode stands on its own. I say will Aquaman get a fair shake this time? <laughs> um, the I don't know if the I don't know what Zeb has planned for uh, the ocean uh, characters and Super Mansion. Um, I know on Robot Chicken our Aquaman character will never get a fair shake, <laughs> uh, and I've got to imagine at some point we're going to meet the characters from Atlantis or something yeah. close to it. Um, I sort of can't wait to get into that. That's what I love about this show is um, comic books seem really simple at first, but there's sort of a, a never-ending supply of stuff to make fun of. So I'm looking forward to that. What comic books in particular are you thinking about? Um, boy, you know, there's this whole run of image comics from the 90s and actually Marvel was doing the same thing where it was just these gritty characters with guns with bigger and bigger guns with pouches full of ammo and then pouches on top of those pouches uh, Cable comes to mind from the X-Men uh, a lot of the image books I, that's an era that I don't think we've explored yet and I think that'll be really cool to get into um, yeah, that seems sort of ripe for, uh, for making fun of. Um, but really, any you know, any era of comic books has a lot of stuff that you can make fun of. Uh, so I don't think we're going to have any problem <laughs> coming up with inspiration. Uh, so Brian Cranston, is, you know, normally does a live action acting. So what was it like to work with him on the voice acting? Well, he just brings, um, you know, so much human emotion to the role, um, and he really made the role his own. Um, and, and so, you know, I don't think Zeb and Matt had any problem getting great performances out of him. And in fact, he would sort of, uh, I think, steer the character in directions they weren't expecting. Um, and and we've had a lot of great luck on Supermansion casting where um, you know we get Jillian Bell in and Chris Pine and Keegan-Michael Key and, um, and they they're all so great um, that you know lines that we wrote in the script are all of a sudden much funnier than they deserve to be <laughs> which is always a, a treat when you're a writer and you're like, ah, I think that line's pretty good. And then a real actor gets a hold of it and it turns into a good line. So, uh, how, how many different mini stages do they have working on Supermansion and Stupid Brothers? There are 30 animation stages, um, and every animator averages between 6 and 10 seconds a day. Really? Um, and so, uh, if you do the math, we're turning out just enough. To uh, to make these shows, so but it's work a whole day just to do six seconds. Yes, wow. sometimes less, depending on how complicated the shot is. That um, that takes a lot of patience. You really need to love the art form to yeah. do that. Uh, yeah. Those animators, 
they have, they're not always patient outside of the stages, but when they're on stage, they have this focus. Like we're not even supposed to bother them in the middle of a shot. Like if a set is hot, the curtains are closed, and you better have a really good reason for poking your head in there and interrupting them because they really uh, get into a zone. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, I, I could never do it. I've, I've animated a total of one shot in the whole history of Robot Chicken. In season one, we were way behind, and they said, we can't afford an animator. There's a set ready to go. We can give you a half-hour tutorial. Do you want to spend a day animating it? And so I animated one shot of a character kind of doing this, and it took hours. Wow. Um, and that I never you? wanted to do it again. <laughs> you remember that? That was a good Brilliant. shot. Uh, if you're familiar with the Robot Chicken, it was in. Uh, we had a season one sketch where two Michael Jacksons oh, were totally. fighting. They were dance that. fighting. And that was you? Uh, one shot, and that okay. was me. Yeah. <laughs> None of the dancing. I totally remember but can that. any of the animators say that they wrote anything? Uh, the, well, the funny thing about those animators is they're very good at adding a little extra joke in here and there. Uh, sometimes in the background of things. Or just even in giving a performance that you weren't expecting, they'll make it funnier in a way that wasn't written. Uh, so they are writers in a way, except we're not going to give them any credit for it. Okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing. There's a great back and forth between all the different unique personalities in the show. Do they actually get to record together, or is that just after? Every once in a while, uh, they record together. But because of the schedules of these actors, we can't ever get them in the booth at the same time. And um, it's hard to ask them to, uh, you know, to wait around. Um, so we get them in and out as fast as possible. It's sort of the way we, on, especially on Robot, that we've gotten so many, um, you know, A-list actors to do the show is because they know it's not going to be any more than half an hour. They're going to be in and out. They're going to get to play three characters and have a lot of fun. Um, and so setting it up more like a stage play or a radio play where they're, you know, sitting around their microphones recording a whole episode at once. Um, it's just not something we can do most of the time. So it happens occasionally. I, I, I was in the booth with um, Heidi doing a Brad and Cooch scene, uh, but it was only because Zeb didn't quite think we were getting the emotion of the scene right, but the characters didn't sound like they were in the same room, and so he put us in the booth at, at, all at once. Uh, but it's pretty rare. Jokes or segments this season you're really looking forward to sharing with people? Any, any highlights that you're excited about? Um, you guys have actually already seen one of my favorite bits um, in episode two, where the uh, uh, Black Saturn's pet pig <laughs> finally <laughs> reveals its powers, <laughs> and this horse. The, the mini horse that you've grown to hate so much goes head to head with the pig and the pig just sort of breaks every bone in the horse's body. That was something we, that we were laughing about in the room and we couldn't wait to see and then it was even better than we thought it was going to be. Just the violence of that was really funny to us. These two cute characters just demolishing each other. Was that supposed to be a Breaking Bad reference in that scene where <laughs> yes. he goes, you already made your mind up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. I thought there's, so. I was just making sure. <laughs> there's more than one Breaking Bad reference. I didn't catch that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already made up your mind five minutes ago. Or yeah. Oh, Brad, ago. you sweet fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made up your mind five seconds ago. Is what he said. Uh, I was at a screening, and I think, and I, uh, and Brian was sitting next to me, and I could see him sort of. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of realized what we were doing for the first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was fun. What was it like working with Crackle? They're relatively. Um, they are, but they they've been really open to um, doing the kind of comedy that we like to do. And I think having a track record on Robot Chicken for seven seasons was really helpful. Um, you know, I don't know if they give Jerry Seinfeld a hard time, probably not. Uh, but they were very uh, easygoing with us, which was great. And that's all we want as creators is just to, 
you know, uh, not have any, uh, not not to have our parents be too strict. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Thank you. That's great. That it? Thanks Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Have a good day. You too. Good luck with the show. It's great. Thanks a lot. I'm with my family. Is it okay? I could get three more? No, one. Yeah, one more. Thank you. Thank you. Do we get to cut the line? Do we cut the line? Um, I don't know if we we'll cut the line, but it'll take you straight to the reserve seating area. Do we need a uh, wristband too? No. No, you don't need a wristband with these? No. I've, I've got, a, got these before, not this year, previous, oh, okay. last year. And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, some guy tried to sneak around. Oh, wow. She caught me. And she was like, she was. And I was like, Thanks a lot. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, no, I saw one get bombed for wristbands in the morning.